here, here are some examples of brains. Um, in fact, the neuroanatomy group gave me uh, a bunch of brains so we can maybe pull out a couple brains and look at how they differ. But, you know, there's sort of a difference in sizes between different animals. Uh, what, what do you see as some of the big differences between the different animals just sort of looking at the gross anatomy? Size of the cortex. So, yeah, some of them have lots of cortex. What else do we see that's different? So this is, human is down on the bottom here. This is dolphin, that's chimpanzee. And what's the difference between human and uh, rabbit or rat? Yeah, so you see a lot more wrinkles in this one here. You come, you know, we'll talk about the proper term is in a second. But yeah, so the other is the amount of cortex. Um, so this is actually cortex here. Um, this is olfactory bulb, this is cerebellum. Um, you can barely even see the cerebellum on the human. It's buried so deep down here. And we'll also find that there's sort of different areas are um, responsible for different kinds of things. And the brain, the human actually has a whole lot of prefrontal uh, versus, you know, rat, which has very little uh, prefrontal. So here's, I'm going to show some videos. Here's the brain. Much the largest part of the brain is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is partly divided in the midline into two cerebral hemispheres. Below the cerebrum and separate from it is the smaller cerebellum. The cerebrum and the cerebellum both grow out of the brainstem. The brainstem becomes continuous below with the spinal cord. Here is cerebellum cerebrum uh, olfactory bulb from rat and human and you can see sort of the proportion of cerebellum to cerebrum is very different amongst rats and humans and you can see here's some of the brain so midbrain areas midbrain so the whole ratio of sort of the lower down stuff compared to the big cerebrum is different the surface area of the whole brain is about 2,500 centimeters squared. Uh, I'm told this is like two large pizzas, uh, one for each side. So uh, the average weight is about 1.3 to 1.4 kilograms, um, slightly different weights for men and women. The number of neurons uh, in this format is 100 billion neurons, um, or 10 to the 11th neurons in the brain. There are approximately, if I took this volume and divide it by the number of neurons, I get approximately um, 80 million neurons per centimeter cube, but there's a lot of parts of the brain which is just, you know, axon pathways sending information from one area. So if you actually just take a part of the cerebrum and that's fairly dense uh, in comparison, it's probably well over 100,000, uh, 100 million neurons per centimeter cubed. And if we think about our electrodes, our electrodes are about one centimeter spacing that we use for measuring EEG. I mean, that's 100 million to one in your recording. So a lot of people are, you know, I, one of the students asked me at the end of class, do you think we'll be able to read the brain, you know, and understand what people's dreams are, dream, what they're dreaming or they're thinking, uh, you know, how do we get enough electrodes to get to a, close to a one-to-one -one with identifying every single one? It's a real, it's a real problem. Um, and I think it's going to be a long time before we ever have the technology which will be able to um, record at that resolution and then process it. I mean, it's just a tremendous amount of data. Um, then the, there's glial cells. Uh, which are about um, 10 to 50 to 1 in the brain. So there's uh, a lot more glial cells than there are neurons. Uh, and then every neuron connects to other neurons, and there's approximately 1,000 connections per neuron. So there are on the order of 10 to the 12th, up to, to 15, yeah, but anywhere 1,000 to 15,000 connections, um, depending on the cell type. Um, so... Uh, uh, just a rough estimate, 150 times 10 to the 12th number of connections in the brain. So it's a, 
lot of connections, a lot of neurons. I mean, this is the intimidating. This should be intimidating to a neural engineer thinking of how we're going to re read and and understand what's going on. There's just a tremendous number. Um, you could go under the assumption that there's a tremendous amount of redundancy, and therefore you could reduce it down to just a few electrode recordings and still get a lot of information. And we're also going to find that you don't have to read all of them. You can sort of read sort of general patterns of of neuronal behavior and activity and get some understanding of what's going on without having to see the activity of every individual neuron.